like to call this meeting to order. Thank you for joining us during our weekly virtual MLS breakfast meeting. My name is William Wei of Pinnacle Real Estate Group. A few housekeeping tips. All participants will be muted. And should you have a question or a comment, please remember to enter it into the chat box. Please remember to join us weekly as we will have our virtual MLS breakfast meeting every Thursday at 9 a.m. And as always, this meeting is being recorded and will be available online on our YouTube channel, West San Gabriel Valley Realtors. Please remember to follow WSGVR social media on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can also watch all our pre-recorded videos on YouTube. WSGVR introduced a new text message service. For updates, text WSGVR to the number 72727. A little about me. My name is William Wei, and I am the October MLS program chair. Today's agenda consists of our affiliate spotlight, Tony Escamilla, via home inspections, followed by President's Message by Mindy Ye, 2020 WSGVR President, and our guest speakers, Bowen Park Mayor Manuel Lozano and Community Development Director Benjamin Martinez. Just to remember, that to be eligible for today's raffle, you must be a WSGVR member and your name must be displayed to win. No telephone numbers will be accepted. <clears throat> Today, our affiliate spotlight, Tony Escamilla via home inspections will be brought to you by the affiliate committee. The floor is yours, Tony, are you there? Um, good morning, everybody. Can you hear me? Yes. There we go. I was muted. Sorry about that. Um, nice to see everybody. I can't wait till we get a chance to uh, see each other in person. Um, just wanted to uh, share a couple things about me. Um, am I going to be able to share my screen? Um, I think so. Yes. Okay. Let's, uh, let's share the screen here. There we are. A um, couple things about myself. Uh, my name is Tony Escamilla. I am the owner of Villa Home Inspections. I've been in business for the last 22 years. Um, I am a licensed general contractor for the last 20 years. I am an ICC certified construction inspector, residential and commercial construction inspector. I am a NACHI certified uh, home inspector and I am a uh, California Office of Emergency Services post-disaster inspector for the state of California. And I personally conducted over 8,000 inspections. Um, a little bit about what my company does. Uh, our home inspections include a 1500 plus point uh, inspection. We cover everything from the roof uh, to the foundation and everything in between. Uh, my model is we check everything down to the last doorknob. Uh, we do sewer, sewer camera inspection, so you can get your sewer camera at the same time as you'd get your home inspection. We do repair price cost estimate reports, which basically takes a home inspection report and creates a cost estimate report with actual figures. And it's very accurate, helps with your negotiation. You don't have to schedule additional contractors to come in and out of the property to give you estimates. We do thermal imaging, moisture intrusion inspections, pool inspections, drone roof inspections, and repair uh, verification inspections. On a rare occasion where the seller actually wants to um, repair uh, things, we go back and verify that it's been done. Um, our October special is sewer line uh, camera inspections, 10% off of uh, uh, sewer line camera inspections. And um, a free download to everybody here uh, who wants to download this, it's our home maintenance manual. Um, lots of useful information, you can pass it on to uh, your clients, it's a PDF, uh, it's free, no, uh, no strings attached. 
And if you've ever gotten a report that you don't understand some of the uh, terms in your report or your appraisal or your termite inspection report, um, this guide has about a thousand uh, terms in it that you can look up and I'm starting to add photos on it. Here is the URL. Uh, it's not a public URL, so you want to copy this or screenshot it. And um, so that's about it. Um, I'm glad to see everybody. I'm on my way to do an inspection right now for a uh, for one of the uh, members right now um, out in South Pasadena. So I'm um, looking forward to uh, working with everybody. Thank you, Tony. Uh, we will now have our top affiliate introduction for today. Please remember to support our affiliates with your transactions. Thank you, Bulleen. Our first is Brendan Zabransky from First American MHD. Good Brendan. morning, everyone. Hope everyone is doing well. Um, I hope you have a great day. And again, this is Brandon Zabransky with First American Natural Hazard Disclosures. And our next person is First Mark Wu from Allstate Insurance. Good morning, West San Gabriel. Mark Wu, agency owner, Allstate. For your property, insurance needs, five languages out of our office, all licensed staff willing to assist you with your escrow closes. Next, we have Yunita Wu from Home Warranty of America. Good morning, everybody. You need a woo from Home Warranty of America, your 13 months home warranty. Uh, we have a special promotion coming up this month. It, we have seven different promotions that you could choose for your buyers. I'm here to help you. If you need any help, please feel free to reach out to me, and I'm here to take care of you guys. Have a wonderful week. Thank you. Okay, next slide. Next, we have Tom Zen, TJ Management, LLC. Hello, everybody. This is Tom Zhang from TJ Management, and we can help you reduce your headaches during your uh, rental period on your one to four unit residential properties. Thank you very much. Next is Sandy Franco, First American Home Warranty. Good morning, everyone. Sandy Franco, First American Home Warranty, here to take care of your clients and have a great week. Next is John Wax, Snap NHD. Somebody better take over. He's signaling okay. his, uh, oh, now he is going. I'm here. Uh, <laughs> hi, Nancy. Next, we have uh, Nancy Chen from Lawyer's Title Company. Good morning, Nancy Chen, Lawyer's Title, 39 years in the industry. Let me know what you need. Thank you very much. Nice seeing everybody. Next, we have Cosmo Sanchez from New Aim Funding. Good morning, everyone. Hope you're enjoying this great change of weather. My name is Cosmo Sanchez. Home Lender with New Aim Funding. Thank you. Next, we have Sage Gomez, My NHD. Good morning, everyone. Sage Gomez of My NHD. Everyone have a great October and have a great day. Thank you all. And we are happy to include open pitching to our virtual MLS breakfast meeting. Let's get started. For today, we have one listing from Shan Zhang. Sean, you have the floor. Good morning, everyone. Sean with VMAX. Um, I have 1360 Michelinda Avenue. It's located in the upper rental area of Acadia. Um, it is a five bedroom, three and a half bath um, with almost 25,000 lot size. Um, there is a bonus room with full bath and one bedroom. Also, there's a guest house perfect for out of town guests or relatives. Um, it has its own entrance, one full bath, um, kitchenette, and one um, bedroom as well. It is Acadia School District asking for 2.088. Um, it's excellent conditions, um, has a um, circular driveway. Uh, I will be having virtual open house this weekend. Uh, question, please give me a call back. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Sean. Uh, next, we have our president's message by Mindy Ye, our 2020 president. Thank you, William. Good morning, WSGVR family and friends. I'm Mindy Ye. It's an honor to be your 2020 president. Thank you for attending our weekly virtual MLS breakfast meeting. And we're always grateful for your continuous support as a valuable member of West San Gabriel Valley Realtors. Please. Don't hesitate to reach out to our leadership team and staff. We're always here for you, especially during this 
pandemic era. My, my message this morning will be very brief. Happy Columbus Day this coming Monday. And with that, I would really like to share this with all of you. Hope you have a great time exploring the adventure of life. Please remember when you had a rough day and all triple Monday, always end the day with a positive thought, no matter how hard things were. Tomorrow's a fresh opportunity to make it better. I don't know who the author is. As I mentioned last week, California Association of Realtors in September came out with 10 new forms and two revisions relating to rent issues with tenant during COVID-19. For this month, this new CAR form, Fair Housing and Discrimination Advisory, FHDA is incorporated into CAR purchase agreement in your listing agreement, buyer broker contract, and lease agreement. That's all the update I have for this morning. I would like to thank our special guest today, City of Baldwin Park Mayor, Manuel Lorenzo, um, Lorenzo apologize, um, and Director of Community Developments, Benjamin Martinez. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mindy. At this time, I would uh, like to welcome our speakers for today. Uh, we are very honored to have invited uh, City of Bowen Park Mayor Manuel Lozano and uh, Community Development Director Benjamin Martinez. Mayor Lozano has been elected to nine consecutive terms as a mayor for the City of Bowen Park and is the only mayor to have achieved this accomplishment since the city was incorporated in 1956. Uh, director Martinez is a director of community development for city of Bowen Park. He has over 26 of experience in both the public and private sectors throughout Southern California. He was also the recipient of four awards of excellence from the California Redevelopment Association and their topic will be Bowen Park City Update. Please take it away, Mayor Lozano. Mayor, please unmute yourself. <laughs> all right, thank so you. well, first of all, I wanna thank each and every one of you. You play a very important uh, role uh, in real estate. It not only enhances the cities throughout the country, but it provides the revenue that generates uh, different businesses and different needs in our community. So I want to acknowledge you for the great work you do. Before I begin, I want to also um, acknowledge Mindyen, the president, uh, and also Mr. William as well for the introduction uh, today. And it's important for us uh, and me as Mayor of Baldwin Park, uh, represent the city of 75,000 in population uh, with 6.76 miles. Despite the pandemic that we're facing, uh, the city of Baldwin Park continues to do well economically and financially and we're stable. And that really sends a, a very um, uh, um, positive message. But at the same time, we are looking at uh, creating different types of programs for our cities. We are providing uh, lunches, lunches uh, we're providing various meals uh, for, to our seniors. And we're also looking at um, uh, various projects and our redevelopment uh, director will uh, touch up in that area, Mr. Martinez. Uh, real estate continues to thrive uh, in the city of Baltimore. And I, as you probably know, the San Gabriel Valley is a very important area. It, we are very close to just about every major uh, city and entertainment. And I believe that's what makes us so unique. I have been a resident of Baldwin Park since 1979. And uh, this is the city where I will be in. It's the city where I will, will, will retire. Um, we have various types of businesses that, that are coming uh, to town uh, and uh, that will be shared with you. But at the same time, also looking at the housing, uh, the state has reported that there's a 3.5 million uh, homes that are needed uh, housing uh, throughout the state. Uh, that says a lot. We're doing our part by bringing in uh, various projects uh, for low to moderate income uh, uh, residents in Baldwin Park. And we're also um, uh, providing uh, financial uh, uh, needs uh, through federal and state uh, grants that have, uh, that have become available. And, and as we know, 
Unemployment is high throughout the county, so it's important for us to focus upon the residents' needs. Um, since I've been in office, we have seen various uh, centers uh, built in Ballon Park as the Walmart, the Home Depot, the uh, Harley Davidson, um, Smart and Final, and a multitude of different others that have made um, Ballon Park a, a city where people want to live. Not only because I stated uh, the fact that we're very close to so many major uh, centers and cities, and that makes us uh, makes us very unique for that for, the, for that matter. Um, so I want to thank you once again for allowing me the opportunity uh, to be here today. But before I move on, I want to also acknowledge a good friend of mine that's uh, part of your association, and uh, that is Ann Pham from uh, Chicago Title. And thank you, uh, Annie, thank you very much uh, for making this possible. So if anyone has any immediate questions, I am available. Have, however, I have to rush out because I have three more Zoom meetings at this time. So I, I will have our community development director address them. So I wanna thank you very much on behalf of the city of Ballin Park. Look forward uh, to assisting you and uh, I am accessible. So you can contact me as well. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Lozano. And are you with us, uh, Benjamin? Yes. Good morning. Does everyone hear me? Yes. Good morning, everyone. And yes, the, the mayor uh, is not lying. He is accessible. <laughs> it's unbelievable. That, that gentleman uh, does not stop um, all day, every day, weekends too. So uh, it's a pleasure to work for uh, and serve him and the entire mayor and city council of Baldwin Park. And uh, this, uh, someone gonna display the presentation and I'll get right to that. We don't wanna read more about my bio. <laughs> Boring. <laughs> yes, uh, the link has your uh, PDF file. Okay. Well, again, good morning. Again, my name is Ben Martinez. I am the Community Development Director for the City of Baldwin Park. Um, I've been with the City of Baldwin Park for a little over, uh, about, about two years. Uh, not a long time at all. Um, you really, in my type of work, you really don't get things going in a city uh, until about the five year mark. Um, so, I can see that having been with Baldwin Park a couple of years, we're just getting started. Um, I've worked for many cities uh, in San Diego County and LA County, both as an employee and a consultant. And what I try to do personally is when I arrive to a community, I, I, I know I'm probably not gonna be there forever. So I just like to leave it better. I, I really like to leave it better. And I think I've always achieved that. It's, it's a personal goal of mine. And, um, and uh, I'm doing that with, uh, with Baldwin Park as well. And we're, we're rolling. We're, even in this pandemic, we are really moving forward as a community. Um, so let's go to the next slide. The snow-capped mountains over, over that bridge. It's very nice. So the, the next slide, which, thank you as you adjust it, just to kind of orient, uh, we're at the uh, northeast corner of the, of the freeways 10 and, and 605. So I think we generally know where Baldwin Park is, but um, that's where we're at, surrounded by freeways, which is a, a good thing. We, uh, we do tend to take advantage of uh, uh, billboards. Uh, when you go through our city, you see a lot of billboards. Um, uh, that's a, a little bit of a re revenue generator for us. So it, you know, some cities don't like them, some cities do. We like them. Um, next slide, please. So here's our city council, the mayor Lozano, you, you just met. Uh, Paul Hernandez is the mayor pro tem. Uh, Jean Ayala is uh, our council member, one of our council members. Alejandra Avila, our other council member. Monica Garcia and Maria Contreras is our city treasurer. Thank you, next slide. The executive team, um, I'm there on the, towards the bottom right, but it is led by uh, Mr. Shannon Yahtzee, just like the board game, Yahtzee. Um, he's been with the city about five years and, and really one of the, just one of the best managers I've ever worked for. I work for a lot of people. Uh, he's just a really, really good guy. 
and I really, he's smart and he's really taking the city in a, in a good direction. And you can see all the other members, our city attorney, public works director, human resources, our uh, uh, interim police of chief, uh, chief of police and director of uh, community services and so forth. It's a good team. We're, we're a happy team. We work together very well. We like being together. I mean, that's not always the case. I've worked for many cities, like I said, and it's not always the case that people uh, work together truly as a team and as almost like friends, you know, um, and it's really nice. So it's a really nice environment. I think when you come and visit us or need to interact with us, I, I hope and pray that it, it's a good, uh, positive vibration you're getting from our city. We, we actually just remodeled our second floor and it really looks nice. We were, it was long overdue and our second floor where you might come in for some services uh, really looks nice. So um, I wanted to give you an idea of what's happening in the city of Baldwin Park. Um, there's a lot happening uh, as, as realtors, uh, you don't just sell a home, you sell a community. And so we're, we're trying to, we're doing our best to try to round that out to create a nice community. Um, we know that a nice community uh, creates nice neighborhoods and, and then improves uh, uh, home values, right? And property and home values. That's just the bottom line. I've seen it over and over again. Um, I work for a city uh, down in San Diego County. They used to call it, they, it was mean. They used to call it nasty city. You can't believe that? It was a city of national city. And when I went there, they used to call it nasty city. And I was almost a little embarrassed to work there, to be honest with you. I was, you know, kind of snuck in through the back door and I thought, oh, I'm going to work for nasty city. Well, you know, let me tell you, you go down there today, it is not nasty city anymore. We literally shut people up. You know, we literally shut their mouths. We said, no, nope, we're not gonna be that anymore. So um, that's what I wanna uh, do. Not that Baldwin Park is starting out with that sort of reputation, but we just wanna get better and better. And these pictures aren't the most um, sexy, um, but when you see uh, them, some of them are under construction when you see them in live, you know, some of these are not even live shots. They're just, you know, um, artists or, you know, architectural renderings, they're not real. But we have everything we're doing, we're doing right, okay? We're getting, we have two, even in this pandemic, we have two new Starbucks locations coming in. We have two new 7-Elevens, uh, donut shops. We have, where we had this really um, uh, bad, ugly, ugly looking old Shakey's restaurant that had been abandoned. Now we have a new uh, Jack in the Box on the upper right coming in and we have Raising Cane's coming in. We have an, uh, several other that I can't even mention, but several other uh, you know, mainline restaurants that we all know and, and love and love to go to. We're getting those in, in Baldwin Park. We're a, a, we're a, we were a tiny bit behind the trend on some of these restaurants, but we're catching up now. And those, that's important. People wanna have good uh, dining services. Um, we all love to eat, let's face it. Um, I mean, I even, well, I won't get into that, but I had William touch up my photo in the bio because, you know, I love to eat. <laughs> Thanks, William. Thank you. See, I made him laugh. So there you go. Uh, even the car wash on the upper left corner. I mean, that, that's going to be built in our city. Uh, that's an upper left corner there. And it was the first rendering of that when the developer came in was awful. It, I mean, we all know a car wash can look really ugly, right? But we said, no, we're not gonna accept that. That's the new attitude in Baldwin Park. No, we're not gonna accept that. Work harder, bring us back something that is, uh, provides your service, makes it a good business, but also uh, stimulates you know, the aesthetic of the community, right? That's what we're all about. The bottom left-hand corner, um, that building, it's an old bank building. It, that picture does no justice to how beautiful a project that is. It's an old bank building, I think it's, I forget which one it was, but it has those high vaulted, vaulted uh, ceilings. And we're gonna have several restaurants in there and we're gonna have outdoor dining there. It's a, it's a really nice, uh, really, really nice project and it's opening very soon. Um, it's pretty much done. And now some of the tenants are moving in and doing their tenant improvements. So um, needless to say, there is a lot 
going on, even in this pandemic, in the in the area of new development. Um, Kaiser Hospital, uh, one of our main employers, uh, just built a huge wing, over 100,000 square foot, uh, another hospital uh, wing. And everyone is expanding, everyone is investing, and that's what we do in Baldwin Park. We care about investment. If you're gonna invest $1 or a million dollars in our city, we try to make the most out of it. We try to appreciate and provide you the service because we want your investment. That's, that's the only way the, the community is gonna grow. Uh, next slide, please. So we are doing a lot of housing. Um, this is just one example of a recent project, uh, the Rome Metro Village project. We're expanding our housing market in our downtown area and we're, we're going up a little bit. So this is four levels here over retail and uh, it won a congressional rec recognition of excellence um, award. And we're doing, uh, we have three more projects like this coming to the downtown area of, of Baldwin Park. Most of them are affordable um, and most of them are, are rental projects. So they're not, they're not gonna be for sale and so forth, but we, um, we're also doing a lot of, uh, well, we're, we're getting a lot of attention in the for sale market as well. Um, I'm sorry, I don't have some of those pictures, but I, I can tell you that, uh, you know, Olson Housing, um, Brandywine, Williams Homes, a lot of uh, single family developers are building, have built in our city and are coming to our city. Um, we have approved plans uh, that are that are ready to be built. Um, I would say it's uh, uh, definitely in the area of you know well over a hundred units. And um, when something new is built in our city, it sells. It it sells fast. That's been that's been my experience, and I don't see that changing e even in the pandemic. Um, next slide, please. Here's another example of a senior housing development that is going to uh, uh, happen in our city. Another four-story product. So we, the city also, you can go, you can stop at uh, um, the housing authority. The city has a, um, yeah, that's fine. The city has a, uh, uh, no, I was gonna, well, that's fine. I'm not at grants yet, but that's fine. Up above, it said housing authority. Uh, and, and the reason why is because the city has a, uh, a very active and regional housing authority. Um, we, you know, we do a lot for our community. Um, and let me just, uh, we do a lot. We have a, a very active housing authority with over 1,000 1, vouchers. Um, we, prov we own affordable housing and, and rent it. We also do the Section 8 uh, housing voucher program um, where we provide vouchers to uh, tenants, to people looking for rental situations. They go out and find the rental property, lease it and utilize the voucher. That's a tenant-based voucher. We have a new program called the project-based voucher. Some of the projects I just showed you before, the brand new construction, we're gonna provide them project-based vouchers to the developer. That means, let's say a project has um, 50 units and we provide uh, 25 vouchers, project-based vouchers. That means for the life of that project, the, the project-based voucher will remain and stay with that development. And, they'll, and the developer will essentially have constant and permanent rent at fair market values being paid with that project-based voucher. So we're, we're, for the first time, we're, we're doing some programs like this that are really helpful. They're really gonna encourage the development of more affordable housing in our city. And uh, we need it. I mean, every community needs it. Um, we, we know we have to work harder for affordable housing. We have to provide those incentives the, the, you know, um, to make it happen. But we also support uh, market rate housing. Uh, which is more the the the, um, the 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 type of housing uh, that all of you are involved in. We know we need that as well, and we want to encourage that as well. One of the ways we're doing that is we've created a downtown specific plan. 
it's already adopted. It's been in work, the works for a couple of years. And now we, we just got a grant to, from the state to, to, um, to uh, revise it, to make it even better. So we're going through a process right now. And I can show you so many more slides, but you know, we don't have all the time in the world. Um, but we have this tremendous uh, uh, process underway uh, to revise our downtown specific plan. We're gonna increase densities. We're gonna increase walkability. We're gonna increase just the development of a community in our downtown area. And that, in, that means more housing, more dense housing, uh, for sale and rental product. And um, it's, it's, you know, it's just a really exciting time as we, 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 like I said, we haven't slowed down. We thought we were gonna slow down with, pand with the pandemic. We have not slowed down. And I feel as we come out of it, as you know, a vaccine is, is uh, implemented and we come out of this, which I know we all uh, are, are hoping and praying for, um, our community should be hitting the ground running. We wanna have that downtown specific plan uh, revised by October of next year. So we're really looking for a positive year in let's say 22, 2022, okay? Um, things are still going to keep moving in 2021, but we're looking forward to a very positive year in 2022. Um, thank you. Let's go to the next slide. That's just a nice little picture there of fountain. Thank you. And then grants. Um, grants, we just, you know, our city just gets grants for everything. Um, we get grants for housing. We get grants uh, lately, CARES Act grants for um, providing assistance, like the mayor alluded to, to seniors, feeding people, feeding families, feeding seniors. We get grants uh, for rental assistance. We're helping people uh, come out of uh, difficult rental, rental situations where they've fallen behind on their rent. We have grants available right now uh, for, to assist small businesses in our city. All of this information is at our website, www.baldwinpark.com. Very easy, baldwinpark.com. And um, we, we're doing a lot. We, we've, uh, we, we've got grants, like I said, to do that downtown specific plan, mm -hmm. many other things. It's uh, something that, uh, oh, we're doing um, a lot of uh, street improvements to increase walkability and also bicycle paths and so forth are, are really, um, um, you know, really uh, uh, bicycle paths and that type of improvement, increasing, increasing um, uh, the use of bicycles is important. As a matter of fact, we just implemented that program. I just saw them the other day where, you know, you have the station of bicycles. I think ours are kind of like a kind of a blue teal color and they're all lined up, ready to go. Um, and you can, I think you rent them essentially. It's so brand new. I don't even know that much about it. Um, Next slide, please. Be Proud um, is another program we're working on. That stands for the Baldwin Park Resident Owned Utility District, Be Proud. Um, a lot of cities have done this. This is not something brand new. Um, the city of Lancaster was the leader in the state in doing this. Essentially legislation was passed about five years ago that allows cities to procure their own energy, okay? So we're not taking the place of Southern California Edison. They're still, they still own the power poles. They still bill you. They still, uh, if there's a power outage, they still take care of all of that. But cities have stepped up and, and created, uh, uh, they're called CCAs. Um, and our individual name is called Be Proud. And we are essentially, getting into the energy business. We, we don't do it alone. We have partners that are experts in this and we secure the energy and um, we uh, essentially with the goal of buying cheaper energy and, and greener energy, uh, you have a choice uh, to stay at the 35% renewable energy or you can go up to 100% renewable energy if you're the type of uh, owner uh, a business person or resident or homeowner that wants cleaner uh, energy. And, um, and we provide that. Um, it's kind of a, we're, we're just launching the program. 
um, if, if you're a resident in a city, you really, uh, you're automatically switched over. You have to opt out if you don't want to be in our program and stay with Edison. And, and we've had very little people opt out. Um, so it's something that in the, uh, you know, yes, why are we doing this? Well, essentially, we want to eventually create a, a reserve fund to stabilize rates. So in the case, we know energy rates have, have shot up, you know, in the last 10 years, I can think of some pretty scary times when it comes to energy costs. And uh, we want to create a reserve fund to stabilize our, our rates in difficult times for the city of Baldwin Park. And we also, uh, if we're lucky, like the city of Lancaster and others, we can cre create quite a fund to um, invest in cleaner energy, do the uh, solar, uh, create a solar panel program, to create, um, you know, the charging stations and all the other types of pro projects that cities are doing. So uh, it's something, um, you know, we're hopeful, uh, we're just beginning, we're hopeful we can be successful at uh, with our Be Proud program. Next slide. Uh, Public Works, I talked about them, very active, doing a, a lot of things in our, our city. They have a great Public Works and Engineering Division. And next slide. We have a, you know, it's just a, it's just a happy community, um, you know, downtown, of course, with COVID, that's changed. But in the past, we've we've just done a lot of activities, uh, downtown festivals and so forth. We close our streets. The summer is very active, but of course, we had to cut back on all of that this year, sadly. The next slide will show you uh, parks. Um, you know, parks are are all beautiful. This one in particular, called the Walnut Creek Nature Park, is really nice. It's kind of tucked away. I bet most of you have never been there. But I like going to it. It's like going to a little camping ground. It's really nice, Walnut Creek Park. I just put it there as one example of our, our beautiful parks in the city. Next slide, I'm sorry. Uh, parks and Rec, again, very, very, uh, very busy. Uh, a lot of these programs we're not doing at the moment, but we're, we have a very busy recreation and community services uh, department. Thank you, next slide. We uh, do a lot of outreach uh, in our with our website, social media, and our Now. Uh, it's, it's like a, a monthly magazine, the Now. We we are very active. We communicate early and often with our community. We uh, we did so with the pandemic, and and I think it I think it paid off. Um, and uh, uh, we are one of the cities. I, I'm I'm proud to say we're one of the cities that you know, address the issue uh, quick, quickly. And, and we put in a lot of safety precautions to uh, not only protect the citizens, uh, the, I'm sorry, the workers at City Hall, City Hall employees, but also the residents. Thank you, next slide. We're doing a lot <clears throat> for the homeless. Um, it's, it's a, we all know it's a regional program, a regional problem. It's not something that one community is facing. Um, uh, you know, Baldwin Park, Pasadena, it doesn't matter where you live. I, I've lived in many different places and, and the homeless uh, uh, person, homeless problem is, is, is uh, prevalent everywhere. We are, we're, we're attacking it from multiple, uh, through multiple ways. I just talked about all the affordable housing we're building, the Section 8 housing that prevents homelessness. We are also uh, getting all kinds of grants. Again, a lot of grants from LASA and other agencies to implement preventative services, coordinators, people that actually uh, go, go out and speak and work with persons that are homeless. And if they will accept services and assistance, we help them. Of course, we can't force it upon them. Um, our, our, uh, our count recently uh, shot up quite high, our, our homeless count. Um, but, uh, and we kind of were shocked at that, but you know, it, it's, it's really the, 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 the situation with the homeless, it's, it's, it changes. I mean, you can be homeless in this community one day and then homeless over in that community. So um, I think, I believe personally that we shouldn't look at it in such a microcosm, you know, it's something that impacts us all, no matter what community you're in, 
whether you can see homeless people or not, um, they're there. They're there. And it's something we all should address. We have taken the big step now to convert our one of our motel properties, the Motel 6 property, right along the freeway, along the I-10. It's going to be uh, um, converted to a home key uh, under the state's home key program. We're going to convert that that motel to a trend, essentially like transitional housing. We're going to we're going to uh, rehab the the units. We're going to make them essentially for permanent supportive housing, permanent housing with supportive uh, uses and assistance. And uh, it's a big step. Uh, we're going to do that. That's permanent housing, and uh, we're going to. You know, we, we lose uh, transit occupancy tax when we do that project because, you know, hotels provide revenue to the city. So we're going to hopefully try to make us whole in that situation. But uh, we're going to we're going to make that big step and provide uh, a trans um, permanent supportive housing in, in our city. Um, so it's uh, something, um, again, having worked in many cities throughout the state, uh, I've worked for some city councils that uh, frankly don't even, they don't want to even talk about helping the homeless. Uh, this city council, the mayor on down, um, they are constantly encouraging us and pushing us to, to help the community, help those less fortunate. It's, it's a really great place to work. It's, if you want to do good, it's, it's been a, if I do, it's been a great place. It's, it, it is a great place to work. I'm gonna slow down, William. Don't worry. I, I probably where am I at? Twenty minutes or? Uh, yeah, you're good. Twenty-five. I'm good. Okay. Oh, see, twenty. <laughs> okay, I think I'm just about done. Next slide. Um, was there any more slides? Yeah. So I am done. Uh, there's a lot more to talk about. I just put together what I could. I knew I had about twenty to twenty-five minutes. I'm here for any questions. And thank you again. Thank you, Director. And we do have some questions from our members. Um, first question is from Richard Zaleda. Is uh, city going to continue the down payment assistance program that city of Bowen Park had? Yeah, we did have that. My, before I arrived, I think we had that program. And I just saw the other day that the Cal, I think it's Cal Home is offering down payment assistance. So yes, um, that is something we need to do. Uh, uh, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna pledge that we're gonna do it uh, because our plate is full. It's something we need to do. So, with your encouragement, encouragement, I'll I'll try to make that happen. We are really busy. I mean, when I dole out the work to staff, and I'm a worker. I'm the director, but I also do a lot of work. Um, I literally now. I say to myself, man, if I give my housing manager one more program, she's just going to sink, you know? <laughs> and uh, so I kind of feel that way when I think about developing another program, but it is very important. So you, you, you folks let me know. If I hear, if I start hearing like I can do a deal in Baldwin Park, if I had down payment assistance, you know, that's going to encourage us to, to go after that money. And I just saw it the other day on, on the email. So so please uh, let me know if it's important to you and we'll, we'll definitely look into it. Good question. Thank you. And next question is from Frankie Ho. The city of Bowen Park have rent control laws besides the statewide rent control. Yes, it kind of falls in line with what um, I was saying earlier. Our, our mayor and city council really want to help the less fortunate. And their view of it is to uh, to have passed uh, rental control laws that are more restrictive in some cases than the state. So it is true. Um, we're we're it's another program we're implementing. I mean, city staff like me, we're not used to implementing rental control laws. Um, it's something I just used to hear about in Santa Monica, right, and other cities. Um, but it's something that a lot of cities are doing now, and we are too. And um, I can say that from personal experience that it has helped. Um, of course, it hurts. It, it can't possibly, you can't possibly be overjoyed by a rental control law if you're a, if you're a landlord. But um, it also has helped uh, a lot of people. So it's something we're new at, something that is, we're implementing and working on. And 
it's something that the city council has asked me to evaluate on an ongoing basis and I plan to do that, but it's still very new. Thank you. <laughs> Next question we have is from Brian Chen. He's asking, has Bowen Park experienced loss of many restaurant business during the pandemic? And what is the city's plan to help keeping these business? And is the city allowing outdoor dining on sidewalks? Yes, all, all of the above. We, we haven't lost any restaurants yet. So I'm, I, I, I think about them. I think about them in Baldwin Park. I think about them in the community I live in. And, it, you know, um, it's, it's a scary situation for restaurants. I, I try personally to go out and eat as much as possible to support restaurants. And, and I, I leave like 18%. My fiance, she's in the room right over here. She like, she just looks at me like, if I don't leave like 25% tip, you know, she just says I'm a cheapskate, but anyway, um, <laughs> she's, she's kind of laughing. Um, so uh, I, uh, Annie, Annie, see, I'm making Annie smile. I see Annie's just, just smile. Um, so yeah, we, we, we do a lot to support our, our restaurants to, uh, with the outdoor dining. A lot of them are doing that. We, again, we haven't lost any restaurants. So that's good and we hope not to, but I know they're struggling. I talk to them every day, they are struggling. Um, and I, what was the other part of the question? We're getting a lot new rest, more restaurants as I showed before, a lot of new restaurants. And that's encouraging that um, a lot of, they're, they're still coming, the new ones are coming. And I, I, again, I think it's because, well, first of all, some of those restaurants like Raising Cane's, I mean, they would, they would do good if, you know, you know, World War III was happening. I mean, <laughs> some of these restaurants do great business. So, um, you know, just with the takeout, right? So we're doing everything we can to bring new res new restaurants, encourage and encourage and help those that are in business to stay so, stay, stay that way. And we're offering up to $5,000 grants, free, free grants for them to, uh, to uh, you know, receive and stay in business. So, those are uh, applications are, are due the 12th of October. So we're doing that right now. And is the city allowing uh, dining on sidewalk? Um, in some cases, we're looking that on a case by case basis. Most of the dining is on private property, like in the, in the uh, parking lot or the, the, of the, uh, or the parking lot of the, of the public or, or the business. And then if the sidewalk is wide enough, you know, depending on the situation, it's not impacting the ADA path of travel or disabled parking and so forth. We, we do allow that. We're being very, we've issued a no, we're issuing no fee permits, so it doesn't cost anything. You, you have to get a permit for outdoor dining, but it doesn't cost anything and we help you through that process. Thank you. And we have a statement from Cosmo saying he loves to eat. <laughs> Cosmo, um, where are you? <laughs> Come over for so... lunch, Cosmo. <laughs> And uh, we have a, I'm not sure if it's a question from Nancy Chan. He said, uh, can you talk a little bit about ADUs? Yeah, I'm not an ADU expert, but that's, my city planner is the one that can tell you all the latest and greatest of that. But I will tell you that accessory dwelling units are, are on the rise. I mean, we are seeing a ton of applications for ADUs. Personally, I think it's a great idea um, I think it's, um, it's, uh, it's, I'm, I'm a fan of utilizing land in the urban core of all of our communities. I'm not a fan. I don't support necessarily the expansion, the, you know, growing outward into suburbia, um, uh, you know, making us drive, um, all those things that greenhouse gas, all those things that uh, I think are, uh, could be our, our downfall in the long run. And this ADU situation is something where we can build up in our communities. And um, the, the California state legislature now has passed, essentially ADUs are so easy to do now. I mean, you can almost do what you want. Um, we used to have to require a certain amount of parking and space and this and that. They've made it so flexible now that um, you know an ADU is a really good option for, for someone that has room on their property for it. And I, I encourage you, I encourage you to look at ADUs if you, uh, for, for, you know, future clients, current clients, um, people looking to, 
maybe uh, mo optimize their uh, property before a sale potentially, or even just understanding the ADU at potential as you're selling a product, okay? Understanding the ADU potential is an important thing because that could be a selling point for you. Uh, now, I'm not gonna be the one to explain all that, but depending on the city you're in, go to the city planner. Talk to the city planner. In my city, it's uh, Ron Garcia, and he'll be happy to help you. Um, you can talk to, talk, contact Ron or, or myself about that. But if you're selling a property or working with another property in you know, Pasadena, talk, talk to them about it, okay? And that's, a, that's an important feature. Okay. And um, we have a bunch of uh, uh, quick questions from John Chen. Um, I hope to maybe address to some of them. Um, let me see. So he asked, Will Be Proud Reserve Fund be restricted or be used as general fund? Good question. It, it will be res restricted. We would, we would reimburse uh, city staff time, right, in the preparation of the program and ongoing uh, expenses, but the, the reserve fund is not a, a like a slush fund. Uh, it doesn't just get thrown into the general fund of the city. It, it, it is a reserve fund for the, the utility. And he also asked, are these projects, I, I'm assuming he was asking about the housing projects, uh, are they funded with any federal funds like HOME or CB, CDBG? The housing projects are come um, from a variety of sources. Um, when we do it, when you do an affordable housing project, it's, think of it like a, a pizza and the pizza has about 10 slices. And to do these affordable housing projects, you usually need about 10 slices of pizza or 10 funding sources. And that can come from the federal, state, and local level, from the county in the form of, you know, it could be tax credits, it could be grants from the city, grants from the county. It's, it's, it's a wild business, the business of affordable housing. I have a lot of experience in it. I've, I've been involved in the development of over 1,200 affordable housing units in, in many different cities. It's a, a wild ride, um, but when you, you get it done, it's very satisfying, but you have to you know, beg, steal, and borrow <laughs> to get it done. It's really, really difficult. And you don't get a break on, nowadays you don't get a break on the quality or the, the cost to build it. Affordable housing looks just like anyone else's housing, and it's very expensive to build. Thank you. And uh, I'm sorry, John, that I couldn't get to all of the questions because of the limited time that we have. And it is a great pleasure and honor to have invited uh, Mayor Lozano and also Director Martinez to have joined us for the breakfast meeting today. Um, on behalf of the West San Gabriel Valley Realtors, we would like to thank you uh, to our guest speakers. Thank you very much. You're welcome. And uh, <laughs> Let's continue with our agenda for today. Uh, next. I'll sign off. Thank you. All right. Thank you. We'll see you next time. Thank you. And next on the agenda, we have the attendance drawing. Please type your DRE member name and email in the chat box. And our first winner is it. Nanette, Nanette, are you here? Going once. Nanette, going twice. Yes, Nanette, Nanette's here. Nanette is here. Nanette, please type. Please type your DRE oh, she, member name and she, email. She's, she got it. She says she's here. Okay, move on. Yeah. Second person. Is it me? No. Julian uh, Chen. Julian Chen. Are you here? Julian, once. Julian Chen, going twice. If you're here, type. Going three times, Julian. Sorry. Move on. Next. 
our second winner. Link. Oh. This past Lin Chow. Congratulations, Judy Wen. Judy Wen. Judy Wen going once. Judy Wen is here. Judy, could you please either unmute yourself or type in? Type in your DRE member name and email address in the chat box. Thank you, Judy. Uh, let's go to the... Oh, hold on, hold on. She has an knowledge. Oh, there she is. Okay, yeah. she got it. Our last winner for today. Joanna Raderman. Joanna, are you with us? Please unmute yourself. No, she's not. No. Okay, I'll we see don't her. see your name. Okay. Next. Congratulations, Natalie La. Are you here, Natalie? Only once? No, no not here. Not here. Let's move on to the next person. Judy Wayne, please type your email on the uh, chat box. Is it Park Lee? Park Lee's name comes up a lot. He is the person is here. He's very lucky. Are you here? Can you type in or say something? I just unmuted you. I just want to make sure you're here. Hello. If not, I'll grab it. Are you the type that put us on the uh, uh, sound and left us? Uh, going once, going twice. Uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> Possible, <Park>. no. <laughs> no. <laughs> I All try right. to unmute you, Pat Lee, but... Um, you're not unmuting right. yourself. Then we'll okay. move on. Kathy Mung. I think Kathy, Kathy was here. Kathy is here. Kathy is here. Are you here with us? Kathy? Kathy can you once? write? Kathy? You I can either type your name to a knowledge or you can unmute yourself. Yeah. Oh, oh. Pac Packley says he, he's here. Now he says he's here. What do we do? Okay, so we so since Kathy did not reply, so we, we can give it to um we can give it to um Pac. Yeah, let's go. All okay, right. awesome. Pac, Pac, could you please type in your email address for us, please? Thank you. Okay. All right. Next we have some great events coming up for Halloween. We hope you will participate and join us for some fun. Um, and let's go to the next slide, please. So we have karaoke video showdown. Uh, Pre-record your video and submit to membership at wsgbar.com. Uh, next, we have a costume contest. It's where you get creative and show us your scariest, funniest costumes. Uh, we have flyer for details and third event is a pumpkin carving contest uh, contact Belim Berrios at the association to reserve your spot pumpkin carving will be taking place on Friday October 23rd and the winner will be announced at breakfast meeting on the 29th next please And um, please make sure to participate in our education classes. A list of upcoming classes is on display on your screen. Uh, we have license renewal on the 9th. We have virtual Ziform Plus training on the 12th. Commercial webinar 1031 exchange happening on the 13th. Um, and we also have HomeSnap Pro app happening on the 14th. Next, please. And at this time, I want to thank everyone for joining our meeting today. We hope to see you again next week when we welcome next week's speaker, Amelia Castro from Wells Fargo Bank. Her topic will be short sale process with Wells Fargo Home Mortgage. 
Don't forget to register for Reimagines taking place October 12th to October 14th. And please also support our affiliates with your transactions. And this meeting is now adjourned.